Hello students, in this video, I have a CBSE class 11th chapter from a book Hornbill, We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. This chapter is written by Gordon Cook and Ellen East. Gordon Cook was a businessman as well as uh, an explorer, means a sea voyager and Ellen East was his friend. In this chapter, uh, we are going to study about a sea voyage. Actually, you can say that it was a sea adventure, which was uh, planned by Gordon Cook for uh, uh, many years uh, before. And then finally, in the year 1976, he executed his plan. This chapter, uh, first of all, the I would like to discuss a bit about the title of the chapter. We are not afraid to die if we all can be together. Means the title of the of this chapter says that if there will be unity, if the family members and the friends and uh, uh, they all will cooperate, uh, I think uh, uh, we will not, uh, we won't have any kind of afraid of death if all the family members and everyone will be together with. So here uh, the poet want to say that there is a uh, there is a strength in unity and if we are unite we can do anything in life uh, <clears throat> whereas in this chapter uh, the, as for as for the theme of this chapter we could find that uh, the author wants to suggest us that if you have uh, a firm determination if we all have a firm determination uh, a strong will i think uh, we can overcome of any uh, any situation as uh, in this chapter all author along with his family members uh, was almost about to die uh, but uh, because of uh, his uh, hard hard work, because of his uh, st uh, strict mindedness, because of his uh, resolution and determination, he successfully conquered uh, uh, the uh, problem and become a victorious. So any problem is smaller uh, is so small if your uh, willpower is strong. So if you have a strong willpower, you can cr crumble, you can crush any problem in your in your life, and you will be a victorious ultimate. Now I'd like to start this uh, uh, chapter uh, uh, line by line. I will explain it. In July 1976, my wife Mary, son Jonathan, six daughter Suzanne, seven, and I set sail from Plymouth, England, to duplicate the round of the world voyages made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. Uh, before uh, starting the explanation, I would like to discuss. Uh, I would like to introduce the characters of this story, the main parts of this story. We will find narrator of this story, uh, Gordon Cook, who was a businessman as well as an uh, sea voyager or explorer, you can say. His wife, Mary, his uh, son, Jonathan, six years of age, and his uh, daughter, uh, Suzanne, seven years of age. You will find another two characters, uh, Larry Wiesel, he was an American crewman. Crewman is a person who uh, knows uh, the art of uh, boating and he has experience of uh, uh, sea voyages. And Hobbs Siegler, he is also a crewman, he is from Switzerland. So all these six personalities uh, will be introduced to us and uh, they are the uh, parts of this chapter. So it is the incident of July 1976, while my wife, Miss Arthur says, this is a personal uh, experience of Arthur Gordon Cook is sharing his own experience and adventure of his life. He says that my wife, uh, Arthur's wife, Mary, uh, and author's son uh, Jonathan, named Jonathan, six years of age, and author, author's daughter Suzanne, who was seven years of age in 1976. At I and I, an author together, his wife Mary, his son Jonathan, his daughter uh, Suzanne, and he himself, means four uh, persons, set sail. They started their sea journey from Plymouth, it's a place name which is in England. So they started their sea journey from Plymouth. And what was their purpose to, uh, uh, with what purpose they started their journey? To duplicate means to repeat the round the world voyages made 200 years earlier by Captain James Cook. Captain James Cook was a very famous explorer of uh, Britain who had uh, achieved a success of making a world, a world round. We see across the world he had registered a big, uh, he has registered a, you can say, record of making a world voyages. That was 200 years earlier. It means the, this is the story of 1976 and 200 earlier if you are going to that will be uh, 1776. So in the year 1776, I think uh, Captain James Cook had made a world voyage, sea uh, world voyage and uh, Captain, Captain James Cook with same target means he wanted to have another world, uh, world voyage just like Captain James Cook. So he wanted to repeat that. 
for the longest time mary and he says that it, this world wages and this plan this uh, uh, wages uh, started in 1976 it was not uh, all of sudden it took uh, some time uh, because uh, for the longest time for a very long time mary and i author and uh, his wife mary a 37 year old business author is telling about him that in in the year 1976 author was 37 years of uh, old a, a businessman had dreamed of sailing in the wake of the famous explorer and they he had a dream he along with his wife had a dream it was there actually a, a dream to achieve the same success as captain james cook, cook achieved and what success james, captain james cook achieved captain james cook had a uh, sea voyage uh, across the world in the year 1776 so they wanted to have the same uh, sea voyage uh, across the world so they wanted to have a world sea voyage and that dream they have were living for a very long time they were planning for a very long time in the week of the famous it means the steps they wanted to follow the steps of the famous explorer captain james cook and for the past 16 years and for last six months they started their journey in 1976 and for last 16 years they were planning for it so you can say that they started their planning for this voyage in 1960 so for the last 16 years we had spent all our leisure time author and his wife spent all their free time leisure time free time honing honing means uh, sharpening our seafaring skills means whatever the skills are just uh, you can say whatever that boating and uh, canoeing and uh, life saving devices when whenever, whenever it is a storm situation so whatever the skills which are required during a sea journey uh, author and his wife for 16 years they practiced and they sharpened their all the skills in britain british waters means in the uh, rivers of britain our boat wave walker well, they started their journey in 1976. They started the journey with a boat named Wave Walker. It was a 23 meter boat, 30 ton wooden hull. The weight of the boat was 30 ton. Wooden hull means wooden made, the wooden made boat. It was a beautiful boat, had been professionally built, had been professionally built, built professionally for voyages purpose. And we had spent months fitting it out and testing it in the roughest weather we could uh, find. And it was not that uh, the boat was uh, built and all of a sudden they. Uh, came for the voyages. This boat was uh, uh, tested for many times, fitting it out and testing it. It, it was being tested uh, in the many uh, many times in the roughest weather, in the bad weather, the most bad weather it was possible. Um, and uh, after uh, having a, a proper test, and while they found that this wave walker boat is quite uh, good for the purpose of uh, having a world voyage, uh, then they started their journey in 1976. The first leg of our planned three year, 1, 000, 1, 5, kilometers journey passed pleasantly as we sailed down the west coast of Africa to Cape Town. So they started their um, journey from the west coast of Africa, west part of Africa, to the Cape Town. It is it is also in South Africa. Cape Town is a city of South Africa. And in the first attempt, the uh, they journeyed for uh, in the first attempt they journeyed for three years. And in this three year duration, they covered uh, 1 lakh and 5,000 kilometer uh, journey from the west coast of uh, western part of Africa to the Cape Town. There before heading east and here uh, in Cape Town, they, they stopped actually for some time. And uh, there in Cape Town, before heading east, before moving forward towards eastern side of the world, we took on two crewmen. They hired two crewmen, two uh, uh, persons who had a lot of knowledge of such type of sea voyages so they hired two two person first one was american larry vigil a person from uh, america named larry vigil and another was swiss from switzerland Hob siegler to help us tackle one of the world's roughest seas because from now uh, on from cape town to towards eastern part of the world in whatever the uh, sea they were going to have the, the proceed their sea voyages they were going to face the roughest sea uh, which was fam for which which was famous for uh, famous the southern Indian Ocean, the southern part of the Indian Ocean uh, is the roughest uh, type of a very dangerous uh, sea to tackle all the problems of the uh, roughest sea and of the bad weather and whatever the problems they were going to face actually. The problems uh, the uh, author already uh, estimated that what problems he will fail, uh, he will face towards uh, while he moves towards southern Indian Ocean. That's why he took two supporters, hired two supporters, Larry Wiesel and Hub Siegler.
on our second day of our Cape Town, uh, and when they started, they restarted their journey from Cape Town with Larry uh, Wiesel and Hob Siegler. Uh, on the second day, we began to encounter strong gales. They started facing as the poet, uh, as the author had expected, that towards the southern part of the uh, southern part of the Indian Ocean, they will face a lot of problems. So, and for that purpose, he hired two crewmen also. And I think uh, that was true as well because on the say, very second day of their journey towards uh, of their voyage towards uh, uh, southern part of the Indian Ocean, they started feeling big gales, means strong air. For the next few weeks, and that is strong uh, air continued for next few weeks. They blew in continuously. The air uh, they found the same strong air. Gales did not worry me. But here, author wants to say, uh, Gordon Cook wants uh, wants to say us that the big size waves uh, the air was not a problem for them but the size of the waves was alarming but because of the air the wave size which was created of water that was very dangerous uh, up to 15 meter and the wave size was 15 meter as you can imagine that what is the height of the 15 meter as high as our main mast main mast means if you have seen the boat in the mid portion of the boat there is a pole adjusted to tie the storm jeeps to tie the ropes and uh, for the for balancing the boat to and to tackle the air so the main mass the main pole of the boat was uh, that was set in the mid of the boat was 15 meters height and because of the gales because of the strong air the waves were creating created in the sea in the in the southern part of indian ocean that were also of the same height 15 meters on december 25 and december 25 found us 35 uh, 3500 kilometers east of cape town and on december uh, 25 um, starting their journey, restarting their journey for uh, after some time, they found that uh, they had covered a distance of 3,500 kilometers from the eastern part, east side of the Cape Town. Despite atrocious weather, even that the weather was very dangerous, very atrocious, very risky, we had a wonderful holiday complete with a Christmas tree. As you know that they were Christians, they were from Britain, Arthur and his family, Gordon Cook and his family. Uh, those two crewmen also were the Christian and 25 December is a, is a, um, is a Christmas uh, occasion. So they celebrated their Christmas uh, in the in the boat. And though the weather was uh, dangerous, uh, it was alarming them, it was giving them some stress and tension. But uh, still they celebrated the Christmas with Christmas tree. New Year's Day. After 25 December, uh, you, know, you know very well that after one week the New Year's Day will also come. So January 1 arrived. Uh, saw no improvement in the weather, but there was no improvement in the weather means the is still the strong weather was blowing and the big size waves were being created. But we reasoned that it had to change soon. But the reason means they thought actually uh, to see the weather condition that uh, the weather will change. Uh, and it did change but for the worse. And actually the weather changed. But whatever the author expected that the weather will be changed, they expected for the positive change. But the change which occurred, which was even the worst, means weather became more dangerous. At dawn on January 2, in the morning, dawn means morning, in the morning type of January 2, the waves were gigantic. The waves became very, very big sized. We were sailing with only a small storm jeep and the air was so fast at the time that they were sailing with them moving in the sea with only a small storm jeep. Storm jeep Jeep. Jeep is a kind of pole you can say. There is a kind of triangular pole to balance the air, to manage the air. And uh, in, 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 in sea boats, you, in voyage boats, you could, you could have seen many storms, which, but the air was so fast that they all, they had opened all the storms, they had removed all the storms and they were sitting with only one small storm Jeep and were still making eight knots and thereafter is still making eight knots. Knot is a, a speed in a boat. It, uh, one knot is equal to uh, approx 1.5 uh, kilometer and eight knot means you can say almost 15 kilometers per hour speed and it is it's a very high speed in, uh, in in a stormy situation in the sea for a boat so they were they were traveling right now they were they were uh, selling right now with a uh, only a uh, small storm jeep but even the air was so fast that even because of that one jeep they were still making uh, their boat was moving 15 kilometers per hour as the sea rose to the top of the east wave and as the uh, the sea waves were very high sized at the time but the ship was also designed professionally for uh, to tackle all these 
tough situation and roughest weather so the ship was rising on the top of each wave suppose that wave was coming and the ship was climbing over the wave so it was not very risky actually we could see endless enormous seas and when the ship was climbing over on the uh, on the top portion of the waves they could see only endless enormous seas means they could they were they were uh, observing everywhere all the side from their sea and they could see only the big side see nothing else rolling towards us and all the sea parts were rolling towards means the big waves are coming towards them and the screaming of the wind and the spray of spray was painful to the ears and the screaming and the air was blowing and when air blows it creates a sound so the air sound and along with air the water was also sprayed on their body and that was very painful to the ears means painful that author was having a lot of fear that if the this air will is uh, air speed will increase it will become a storm situation and they will face a lot of problems to slow the boat down now at eight knot speed is very high speed so uh, to slow the boat speed we dropped the storm jeep they uh, opened the last storm jeep also only is small storm jeep they were having but they opened that also and last a heavy mooring rope and the last means they tied a very heavy size mooring that you can say a loopy type rope in loop across the stone the stone is a back portion of the uh, ship so they tied a big size rope from the main mast to the back side of the rope a uh, back side of the boat to balance the boat because of that it will not sink then we double dash everything then author double last uh, author and along with him the harp uh, sigler and larry bezil they last means tied that they tied every rope double then uh, when uh, went through our life raft drills and thereafter they practice drill means practice life raft life saving raft is a kind of uh, you can say a rubber boat which is inflated with uh, air and uh, which is used in emergency situation to save life so they practice their uh, their uh, rubber size uh, uh, small uh, boats also uh, that if they will have any emergency situation how they, they are going to save them attached lifelines they attach their lifelines with jackets you can see they wear their jackets donned oil skins they uh, wear donned means wear oil skins means uh, waterproof jacket and life jackets and they save other life jackets as well and waited means they made themselves completely ready for uh, the bad uh, weather and for the storm attack and they waited for the because the weather was very bad and it was it was a uh, you know, giving a kind of indication that uh, the weather may become even more worse and they will have a lot of problem the first indication of the impending disaster came at the about came at about 6 pm it is january 2 and about 6 pm at the evening the first indication of the impending disaster means coming disaster coming danger came at about 6 pm that came at 6 pm with an ominous silence all of sudden at 6 pm became an ominous silence ominous means a kind of silence which gives a indication of uh, that something is something wrong is going to be happen so uh, a very strange kind of silence was there and their silence was giving a kind of sense that something dangerous will happen with them the wind dropped the wind speed the wind which was blowing fast the speed of the wind already uh, all of a sudden decreased and the sky immediately grew dark and all of a sudden the sky grew dark means a lot of cloud uh, got in the sky then came a growing roar and all of a sudden the whole the here a growing roar means a roaring sound that was growing that was that was increasing and coming closer and closer to them and an enormous cloud towered aft of the ship and the author noticed that a big size cloud was just hanging at the aft means back portion of the ship with horror with fear i realized author thought that it was not a cloud that whatever he hoped or he expected that was a towered cloud but that was not a cloud actually but a wave but that was a very big size sea wave like no other i had ever seen and that wave was a so was so big size that author had never seen before in his life it appeared perfectly vertical the of the that uh, wave was absolutely vertical uh, shaped and almost twice the height of the other waves and this boat uh, this wave was this sea wave was almost of double size so uh, previously the author had discussed that the wave was created of because of strong gales strong wind of 15 meter size so you can say that it was it was 30 meter size wave that was created uh, at the back portion of the boat the fright full breaking crest crest means the top of the the top portion of the wave uh, of that sea wave was giving a frightful means a very fearfully author realized to see the top portion of the that 
the top portion of that wave that if this wave will collide to the boat the boat will be break will be broken the roar increased all of a sudden the roar of uh, the roaring sound which he heard that in that he started increasing to a thunder it become a thunderous now it become a dangerous now as the storm moved up the uh, face of the water and as the it it was so dangerous that the back portion of the ship moved towards the uh, towards uh, means back the boat completely turned and the back portion came towards front portion and front portion uh, turned towards the back portion and for a moment i thought and for a moment author thought that we might ride over it that uh, his boat uh, will successfully ride on the top of this wave and they will be saved but then a tremendous explosion shook the deck but all of a sudden a very uh, tremendous a very huge explosion blasting sound a sound of blast shook means the trembled the boat means uh, that big wave collided against the uh, deck deck means the upper portion of the boat a torrent of green and white water a torrent means you can say a kind of a uh, wave a kind of uh, a lot of a big uh, big size uh, wave a torrent of green and white green color water means uh, it was uh, it was such a dangerous situation that that they were not able to visible the actual color of the water and it seemed that it is greenish color water so in fear it was appear greenish so a water appeared green and white color that uh, was big size collided against the sea boat on the on the deck broke over the ship my head is smashed into the wheel and it was so big uh, it was a it was so huge collision of that uh, big wave that author's head is smashed means collided into the wheel the you will if you have seen that at the side out outside the boat uh, uh, on all the sides the bicycle wheels are tied for uh, for saving and it's a, also kind of life uh, saving devices uh, at the time of uh, at such times while storming with storm is and basically these uh, wheels are arranged to balance the boat so author head collided against the wheel and i was aware of flying over overboard and all author was quite aware author was knowing author author uh, no fully uh, flying over the boat means author was well aware and he found that he fell his head collided to the uh, wheel and then he came out of the boat means he fell into the water and sinking and he started sinking below the waves i accepted my approaching death author understood that now he will die and as i was losing consciousness and as i he uh, and as he uh, was about to being um, unconscious fainted i felt quite peaceful means well i while author realized that he will die he started feeling peaceful unexpectedly author had not expected this to happen but this happened my head popped out of the water all of a sudden author's head came out of the pot means came out of the water a few meters away and just he saw while his head came out of the water a few meters away he saw that his uh, his boat wave walker was near capsizing means almost about to overturn means sink her mast almost horizontal and all the mast and storms this were almost become horizontal then a wave hauled upright but all of a sudden a big a wave came collided against the boat again and the boat became straight my lifeline jogged out Uh, his lifeline means his jacket his life saving jacket became tied that was tied with rope so that became tied because of that uh, be, while bo- uh, while boat became straight so with a certain jerk his body became straight also i grabbed the guard rails he came to the came near the boat and he uh, he hold the guard rails means safety ropes and sailed through the air and he came through the air uh, means flying into the air into the wave walker means boom and into the main part of the uh, we walk our uh, boat he again re, uh, means he he came out of the ship and he came again into the ship as well subsequent waves means following waves the big wave came and there after the some following more waves came tossed me around the deck like a rag doll means all the following big waves um, just collided against the body of uh, author and they uh, they coll- they 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 thrash him again and again just like a rag doll just like an old dog my left uh, old uh, old doll my left rib cage cracked the author's left side rib cage cracked my mouth filled with blood and broken teeth all the teeth of author's mouth were broken and his mouth was filled with blood somehow i found the will and somehow he he managed to get the will safety wheels lined up the stern 
which is uh, which which is uh, always uh, visible uh, towards the um, back portion of the uh, these wheels are all, all almost found in the back portion of the ship so he, he somehow he hold the wheel that were lined means that were uh, arranged in queue a lot of wheels were there one of them he hold for the next wave and hung on for he and he waited for the next wave to come and he was hanging there water water everywhere he found that everywhere there was water that was a sea so it was water everywhere but in ship also some water came i could feel that the ship had water below he he felt that some water had entered into the sea bottom portion also uh, into the boat bottom portion also but i dared not abandon the wheel to investigate he wanted to investigate that uh, if the um, if the uh, water is uh, water has entered into the bottom of the sea but he dared not to leave the the wheel because it was his safety it was uh, this wheel was not only wheel it was a life for him so he was not able to leave he was not thinking to leave that suddenly the front hatch was thrown open the uh, front portion of the of the uh, of that uh, boat was uh, thrown open means the hatch means door the door of uh, um, you know that in boat there are uh, there becomes various parts and uh, so in one of the parts there was a door and that opened and mary and mary is the wife of author and mary appeared mary came we are sinking and she she screamed in a crying voice she says that we are sinking the decks are smashed the upper portion of the boat is smashed broken and we are full of water and in the bottom uh, author's friend was staying in the bottom of the ship and she said that we are sinking actually means we we are having a lot of water in the bottom side take the wheel author in a crying voice says, i shouted author shouted that okay take the wheel as i scrambled for the hatch and he uh, saying this he started scrambling means uh, moving struggle full of his struggle he he struggled and started move and uh, started moving towards the hatch that is small door means he, he wanted to enter into that small room area and he was trying to make an investigation larry and herb were pumping like madmen larry and herb sigler both these crewmen were pumping the water like a madman broken timbers hung at crazy angles because of the big uh, wave attack the timbers means the uh, parts wooden parts of the boat were uh, hanging at the crazy angles means on a, on a different different angles the whole starboard side the whole right starboard means right portion of the boat the whole starboard the right portion of the boat was buggered in bulge in one means because of that uh, the wave attack towards right side of the boat and the whole right side portion of the boat was uh, damaged destroyed and that came inward cloths crockery all the cloths that was in the bottom crockery items charts uh, that is used for uh, uh, mapping purpose teens and twice lost about in deep water that was moving flowing into the deep water i half swam half crawled author half swam because uh, water entered into the boat also so he swam and half in a crawling mode into the children's cabin he entered the children cabin are you all right and asking uh, he reached there he asked to the children that are you all right i asked yes they answered the children are yes sir uh, yes father we are right from an upper bunk from a bunk means bed there was a bed and from that bed they answered that yes father we are right but my head hurts a bit said sue but susan sue is the short name of susan susan said but father my head is uh, giving some pain it is painful pointing to a big bump she indicated saying this that my heart is uh, my head is giving some um, pain she indicated towards a big bump big bump means as a swollen portion her, her head has been swollen because of some injury and that swelling was just above her eyes on the head portion indicated towards her she said that i have some pain in my head i had no time to worry about bumped heads uh, on this author said that i have no time to think about your bump head about your uh, about your swelling after finding a hammer author now searched a hammer a screw uh, and canvas canvas is a material it is it is made of uh, rubber and uh, a very uh, it's a kind of material which is uh, waterproof uh, water container so he took that canvas i struggled back on deck he is struggling again and went to the back portion of the ship uh, with the boat with the starboard side best open and because the that the right board uh, right side of the boat was bashed open means that was because of that attack bash means attack of that wave which was opened he moved towards that right side we were taking water with each wave that broke over us and because the and the broken side of the right, broken portion of the right side of the boat from that side every 
wave which was coming towards boat some water was entering from that side into the boat if i couldn't make some repair author saw that if i will not repair repair this portion uh, though it is temporary we would surely sink our boat will definitely sink somehow i managed to stage canvas anyhow it was very difficult to manage to stage the canvas with canvas is a uh, proper material very difficult to sp sp spread so he spread that and secure waterproof hatch covers across the gaping holes and in the gaping holes he anyhow with the help of his screw and uh, hammer he was managed uh, him he was he successfully managed to cover that area some water continued to stream below still some water was covering uh, coming in, inside the boat uh, even after covering from the canvas but most of it was now being deflected over the side but most of the water was now deflected that was coming and collided against the canvas and it was returning so now it was entering a very less amount of water into the sea uh, into the boat more problems arose more problems came when our hand pumps started to block up others hand pump blocked up with the debris floating around the cabins and the electric pumps or uh, debris debris means the dirt and dust uh, along with water which entered into the uh, boat because of that the hand pumps were blocked and the um, in the cabins there were some electric sort uh, pumps also but that became short circuited because of bad weather the water level rose threateningly the water level in the in the boat was uh, rising threateningly uh, it was threatening to the author back on deck i found that our two spare hand pumps had been rinsed over overboard he went uh, again towards the back portion of the uh, boat and found that the two additional spare means extra hand pumps he had that were kept on the uh, deck of the boat but that were also uh, rinsed means uh, destroyed because of that big wave attack the those hand pumps were also destroyed along with the forest stay sail and forest in the main storm sail that was also destroyed the jeep you can say that is the dengue's the dengue means a small size boat that is called uh, you can say um, actually life raft drill that was also destroyed and the main anchor and the main anchor that the main pole was also destroyed then i remembered we had another electric pump and all of a sudden i remembered that he has elect another electric pump two short circuit but here is still is another um, electric pump under the chat room floor and he remembered that in the chat room floor we had uh, uh, we had another uh, electric pump i connected it to an out pipe he found that pump and he connected that electric pump to an out pipe out means the pipe which was uh, taking the water out of the boat and was thankful to find that it worked and he was very thankful to the electric pump and god as well that the electric pump pump worked then the night dragged on with an endless that the night came and that night dragged on an endless bitterly and routine of pumping that was very dangerous night for for him bitterly cold routine of pump cold routine means very risky routine of pumping means all night they kept pumping water out of the boat steering and working the radio steering means uh, uh, boating and working the radio and they were moving the radio channels for the radio channels we were getting no replies to our mayday calls mayday calls are those calls which is given on uh, which is given on radio for emergency help so they were trying to get their radio signal and send some messages for help but their mayday calls were not respond which was not surprising in this remote corner of the world and that was not surprising that why their mayday calls were their help calls were not uh, responded by the marine uh, soldiers and the marine uh, help team uh, because uh, in the remote in that uh, um, very interior part of the world and in this bad weather it was very difficult to get uh, any kind of response sue's head had swollen alarmingly the sue head the bump and the uh, swelling of her uh, uh, in her head over her eyes was uh, uh, actually increasing very really dangerously she had two enormous black eyes and thereafter uh, she has two big size uh, means the eyes of uh, she was uh, very uh, big size means a uh, big eyes she has and now she showed up a deep cut on her arm and this time uh, while author inquired about her head bump she showed that there was a deep cut mark on her arm also when i asked why she hadn't made more of her injuries before this and she uh, when author asked that why didn't you inform me about your uh, arm cut also before uh, while you told about your head bump she replied i didn't want to worry you when you are trying to save us all i father i was not trying to give you any kind of tension when you are trying to save us all in this dangerous situation i think that uh, it was not good to give you any kind of further stress